So here the first thing is I would like to write a program which is going to find the factorial of a number. Now you may ask sir what is there in this sir easy sir correct using recursion how would you write. Now I want your brain to start wiring itself to think recursively. Let me show you how to think recursively. 5 factorial all of you know is nothing but 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Another way of representing 5 factorial is can I not tell that if I want to find what is the factorial of 5, I must multiply 5 with 4's factorial. Don't you agree that is also a valid way of looking at it? Which means this thing can be written as 5 into 4 factorial. In general, if I have a number, let us replace this 5 by n. Let us replace it. Don't you think I can write it as n factorial is n into n minus 1 factorial. Would you agree with me? Now, now, this is one of the most beautiful uh, expressions to understand that yes, recursively I can give a solution. Just by looking at this, I know recursively I can give a solution for this. How sir, how do you arrive at that conclusion? Using three parameters I have arrived at it. What are those three parameters? Parameter number one is again, Again, I will, I will not only, I will show you the parameters, but before that, see, for 5 factorial, you need 4 factorial. But are there any numbers for whom you do not need another number to calculate its factorial? Because then there will always be a dependency. This dependency must end somewhere. Otherwise, it will be infinite dependency. For 5 factorial, I need 4. For 4 factorial, I need 3. For 3 factorial, I need 2. For 2 factorial, I need 1. 1 factorial, I don't need anything because I know it is 1. In fact, for those of you who don't know, 0 factorial is also there. 0 factorial is also 1. So don't you think these two guys are fixed? They are independent. Dependency is not there on anyone else. Now some of you may ask, sir, is there no minus 1 factorial? Yes, negative number factorials are also there. There are mathematical relationships for it. But this is not a max class. This is a coding class. So I do not want to waste too much time speaking about the max of factorials. If you are interested, go to Google. You will find beautiful articles explaining negative factorials also for you. But for the time being, time being, understand these two are my base. Because beyond this I need not go. Beyond this, there is no dependency. Would you agree with me? So, this is only nothing but my base condition. Both of them, though I have highlighted only this, both of them are nothing but my base condition. Right? Anyways, you may be wondering, sir, how did you know that this can be solved recursively? I told you three parameters I use. These are the three parameters. The first parameter that I always uh, look at, so where is that? Okay, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I will tell you those three parameters, but can you, can, you, can you look at this and tell me? To find n factorial, if I create a function for this, then don't you think to find n factorial, I must multiply inside the function n into and again call the same function and pass n minus 1. And this can repeat, 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 repeat and go all the way till the base where n becomes either 1 or 0. If n becomes either 1 or 0, I return 1. How many of you understood this concept crystal clear up until this base condition? How many of you understood? Okay. See now, now I am going to write code for it. Watch it. Now I am going to write code for it. So here I will just go and uh, yeah. Uh, you can remove all this, not required. Okay, let it be there. We'll create another function below that. Sure. Okay, so there uh, I will just. Uh, okay. Fine. I'll come here, and what I'm going to do is I'll create one static function which should return the factorial, which is an integer. So int. I'll call this as fact or whatever factorial fact okay and what this accepts is a number n whose factorial you want to calculate. One way to write this is using the iterative solution. I want all of you to write a loop and calculate. Using loop also you can do it but I want to use recursion. So see in recursion always all I will do is I will tell hey listen 
come down to find n factorial all I have to do is n into I want the factorial of the previous number now which is the function which will help me calculate the factorial of a number fact only so again I will call fact and I will tell hey please tell me what is the factorial of n minus 1 hope I am clear whatever this is I will take it and return it because after all I should return it but if you do this 100% overflow will happen because this will keep calling n minus 1 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 when should it stop recursion when it hits the base what is your base condition is when either n becomes 1 or n becomes 0 take 1 return it that is the base how are you able to think so I will go here and I will tell my base condition if in case n value is equal to 0 or n value can be 1 also if either of these conditions are satisfied I will come inside and I will tell return tell me if you really understood what should I return here tell me what should I return here so those of you who are telling just return are not thinking because last time I just wanted to return control but this time if it is 1 or 0 I want to return its factorial value which is 1 so I will tell return 1 like this this is my base factorial of 0 is 1 factorial of 1 is 1 for all other factorials it is n into factorial of n minus 1 now how will this work sir that is your bigger question but before that let me go call it so I'll just tell n equal to uh, yeah n equal to 5 int n equal to 5 uh, and I'll just come there and I'll tell factorial of uh, fact of uh, maybe n and I'll just print it because after all you know this is just return a value I want to see it on my screen so I'll put it within system dot out dot print ln. awesome cool now let us see how it works in the stack and understand how this really functions okay so see guys now this is my stack segment the first function to always get called is main main stack frame gets created this is main stack frame inside main I have a value called as uh, I, I have just put n equal to 5 here directly I am calling factorial let us assume factorial gets called here I'm calling it as fact there I'm showing it as factorial okay let me go change it there it really doesn't matter factorial I will make it as here also I'll make it as factorial okay super now now please understand factorial gets called to factorial I'm passing n value what is n value 5 that 5 gets collected inside n which means n okay here maybe I'm showing a lower value 3 because otherwise it will keep going higher and higher and higher so just watch it n is 3 now see here come inside check if base condition is satisfied look at the base condition is n 0 or n 1 no n is neither which means come here and return what n into again call factorial of n minus 1 3 minus 1 is nothing but 4 which means I'm calling uh, 3 minus 1 is nothing but 2 which means I'm calling factorial of 2 which means again I'm calling factorial one more stack frame gets created what is the n value I'm passing 2 first thing whenever factorial is called I'm checking my base condition is n 0 n 1 no no means what I should do is I must further go and return n which is 2 into factorial of 2 minus 1 which is what I am also showing here and what is 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is nothing but 1 which means to find 2 factorial I need 1 factorial which means again I am calling factorial once more stack frame gets created and there n value happens to be 1 first thing you must always do when you call a recursive function is check for the base condition is n 0 no or is n 1 yes I have hit my base I have hit my base the moment I hit my base no more need for me to do recursion I have hit the bottom now what am I telling return 1 I am telling hey factorial of 1 is 1 see I will return 1 1 is what I will get 
that if I return, that is returned to this function. It's returned to this function. So one comes here. Now come here. So factorial of one returned one. Now n into one, two into one is two. Would you agree with me? And of course that stack frame gets deleted. Two into one is nothing but two. And that two is what I will further return to whoever called me. How come clear? So two comes here. So factorial of two return two. The moment control comes out, stack frame gets popped. Three into two is nothing but six. That is what I am returning to main. So see, factorial of here, just go make it as three so that it becomes clear. Three, okay? So n is three, factorial of three main called, which is nothing but three into factorial of two, which is nothing but three into two, six. That is what ultimately is calculated. That is returned to main. Six comes inside main. I am printing it. Control came out of this, stack frame gets popped. Of course, this will also get popped. I'm not showing it because after this, no more lines are there in main. That also gets popped. But will this work is the bigger question. But how many of you understood how this recursion works? Is it clear to you? For how many of you is it crystal clear? Awesome. This you should have understood when you were in second semester of engineering. At least now I hope you understood. Okay. But uh, let us now um, go and execute it and see whether we'll really get six. So if I take you to my execution window and I put in the relevant command. So compilation, no problem. If I execute six, beautiful. Any confusion till this point of time? So I hope the foundation of recursion is clear to all of you. Foundation of recursion is clear to all of you.